Greetings and welcome back to Smartwatch Ticks. <laughs> Looks like somebody sent me a snowball or something. Well, it's an incredible day anyway because we have something new to dive into. I think so. Mm, boy, did they wrap this good. That must mean it's really valuable, right? Ah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Ha ha, it's a smartwatch. Go figure. Who would have thought, huh? Is it sealed? Yeah, it's sealed too. Okay, we're going to have to open it up here. That side. And that side. Oh, look at that. I think it just lifts off on this side. Sure, okay. What's in the box, one wonders? Let's check it out and see. Oh my gosh. It, no, no, I got it loose. Okay. Oh, somebody is hiding in here. And it looks like a nice metal, solid metal with metal band smartwatch. What is this thing? It is a number three. From Tom Top. Hey, Tom Top, thank you. We haven't heard from you for a while. The number three heart rate smart Bluetooth sport watch wristband bracelet call notification pedometer alarm. You see how they figured out how to get all the keywords in the title to come up right in the search engine? I know. I use that trick too sometimes. So the uh, here's here it is in black. This is what we have, and you notice different watch faces on this thing. And the watch itself, it features a fashionable, extreme slim, only 11.3 millimeter thickness. Yeah, look at that. It is. It's an extreme thin watch, believed to be the first creation in the industry. HD display, G plus F, high sensitive, so forth and so on. Wow. Non-glare gap, non-air gap, an exact non-air gap. Premium leather and stainless steel straps. You can get this many different ways with military liquid metal. Hmm. Something's very creative in the way uh, this is all written up. I hope it, uh, hope it has all these different features. We've got the metal band. It's a 25OC, which is your typical processor for a tethering watch. Little bit of memory. There's your um, 1.3 inch TFT, high definition LCD. It's a 240 by 240 screen, touch screen, no camera. An average battery for this kind of a watch should last a week, it says, and standby and two days or so recharging. The heart rate detector is in it. Calls, messages, entertainment, call reminders. It's got a pedometer. Um, photograph, it supports the remote control, taking of pictures from the phone, but no camera inside of it. And uh, basic Bluetooth information. It can push all these different things to your watch. All right, let's see what else is in the box before we get into this. I've got another box, and inside the other box is a manual and a charging cable. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. This is a standard charging cord, right? It's the regular four pin that just slaps on magnetically couples. Hey, one of the reasons I brought this watch in for you guys was this whole new wireless inductive charging that you're gonna see if you look in the advertising of the link that TomTom Tom provides for this watch. This isn't inductive charging. This is your standard charging cable, in fact, Here's the Z4, which is a watch I already reported on. Uh, very, very similar with the same kind of, of connection. This one looks like it's the same kind of connection with a regular cable. So um, we're going to do the review, but I got to let you know that one of the big reasons I brought in a watch that looks like another one I've already reviewed was the fact it was supposed to support wireless inductive charging, but there's nothing else in the box. It's not hiding in the little cushion. And I don't think it's talked about in the manual, but we'll go through the manual anyway, because we always do that. Whoa, multi-pages. Okay, where's the English? Give me the English, here we go. 
Hmm. All right. I don't know how to go down or across. What do you guys think? It looks like it goes down. Okay, we're going to go down anyway. Just freeze frame it if you want to read what's in the manual. There's the QR code you're supposed to uh, scan, of course, to get the tethering app. More information. What you look for for the Bluetooth setup. The remote camera capability. It's your basic standard tethering watch. But it's in a really nice dressy package, that's for sure. Okay, it's called Smart Life. All right, well, uh, I'm going to charge it up, <clears throat> take off all the plastic, get everything ready, and uh, we'll show you what it does. Interesting. No induction charging. Hmm. Okay, then. Um, if we don't have the fancy inductive charging, then we've got a tethering watch. So I'm going to switch the video from being just a, an overview of this one to a comparison of the two of these. Since we have the Z4 video up for you already, and this video will be kind of a, a look at this one, let's compare them. Do you see major differences or not? The thinness is the same. There's a little microphone port here. On this side, there's one button. The contour of the case is a lot similar. Of course, this is black and that's in gold. And the uh, bands are basically identical. And the clasp mechanism. So this one has a little hole right there that we don't see on that one. On the bottom side, they are different, though. The speakers are across the top. This is a curve and this is flat. And, of course, the charging ports are in different places, and the layout of the uh, heart rate is slightly different. So it is a different overall watch. The back's different, the way it screws in, all of that stuff. This one we know from the specs is IP67 or 68. It's waterproof. You can go swimming with this. You can take a shower with this. I don't see that spec on this one. In fact, I see nothing about waterproof. Got a hole, so I'm not sure, um, but this one is waterproof. All right, let's turn them on and check them out. Now, I've done this before, so I know that when I turn this one on, I don't have any sound. It comes up with the word welcome. I guess we can take that off now. And it just says welcome. And next thing you know, you're in your watch face. Now the Z4, when you press it and hold it, says welcome. And it plays a little tune. This one vibrated when I turned it on. This one played a little tune. Other than that, they boot up right into their watch faces. Let's take a look at the watch faces then. Because that's probably something different. Press and hold to get into them. He says. Taking a little time. There we go. Okay. So we have that one. Then we have another one I'm going to come back to. Come back to that. And we cycle through. Here we have this one. And there's one. Another one. That one. Mm-hmm. And back again. So one, two, three, four, five of them. One, two, three, four, five, six. But they're totally different, right? Hit OK. And you get to see what each one looks like. So perhaps if they are pretty much identical, you'll decide based on which watch face you like. Notice that one was kind of animated. We'll come back and stay on that one when we do the analysis. Here's a different pair of watch faces. Now, these are what you call the VXP type watch faces. And if you want to put more on here, you should be able to. Um, there's a website I'll refer you to down below where a lot of people are creating uh, watch faces that will run on these tethering type of watches. And you can simply go there and download them. They're all free. And you can learn how to um, install them from that website. There's some tutorials and stuff on that as well. Okay, so we've gone through all of the uh, watch faces. Now we're back here on the one that we can just kind of hold on to. Let's take a look at, at what happens when you scroll to the right on each of these. 
Take a look at the app layout in the pages. Now, you tell me if I need to go through an hour of review on this watch, or whether you can just watch the review on the Z4 and look at how all of these different icons work. Uh-huh, thought so. So you're going to have a nice short uh, video today. And if you are interested in either of these watches, you can get details about how they operate by going to the review on the Z4, because it will be the same as the, uh, what we have on the N3. Now, settings is one place where things could differ slightly, but I don't think so. There's all of the options that we have. Goes down past display. Ah, to international on here. Here we have flight mode and then international. So the N3 has a different firmware that gives us a flight mode. And you have apps, reset and about. And we have apps, reset and about. Let's take a look at the apps. We don't have any installed ones that need uninstalling. And let's look at about, because that's where if there's any differences, they'll show up. The N3, the Z4, connected services and so forth. Then we get down to the version information. And look, they're running pretty much the same thing. This is 2017, July 17th, 2017, August 5th. And there's the release dates. So it's a firmware difference between the two. That one restored itself back to the watch face before turning itself off. This one may do that too. I just have a different timeout on it probably. Yep, there it goes. Now one more thing I want to show you before we leave this section. When they're on... If I scroll down on this one and down on this one, I go into here. And this is a, a display page where you can go into or out of airplane mode, turn on or off Bluetooth, and activate or deactivate the sound. Now, it's interesting. You do have the sound on this watch, but you don't have that startup and shutdown tone. If I silence it here on this one and I turn it off, you still have this turn on and shut down sound. So on this particular watch with this particular newer firmware, every time you turn your watch on or off, it's going to make sound. This one, it doesn't do that when you turn it off. It just vibrates, it says goodbye. Okay, so what are we looking at here? Overall, we have the uh, TomTop N3 is what this is called. I really appreciate TomTop sending this out for us to review. It's a good watch. It's a different watch. It's the same watch. I, it was brought here with the intent to show you guys wireless inductive charging, which is one of the, uh, the little uh, thumbnails you'll see as you scroll through the link in the show notes below talking about this watch. Other than that, it's a basic tethering watch. The unit that was shipped to me doesn't have it, doesn't talk about it in the manual. I'm thinking this might be an error. Um, I'll let them know. Uh, and you know, watching this review, that if you buy this particular N3, it's probably just going to come with a charging cable. Uh, you can get it in metal. Uh, you can get it in um, leather bands. You can get it silver. You can get it black. And of course, on the uh, Z4, you can get it in gold as well. So there you have it. It's uh, an interesting tethering watch. By the way, you see little bubbles right there on this one? That's not part of the screen. That's a little screen protector that's sitting on the surface. And I usually just remove those. Um, I don't end up having glass scratches. And for me, sometimes the sensitivity is better if you don't have it on there. But if it's not put on properly, if there's a tiny grain of sand, you're going to get a bubble in there and you can't get it off. So just take that into consideration too. It's not a defect so much in the watch and it's random which ones would have a little uh, defect underneath the screen, uh, but you can always peel that off and just toss it away and use the glass that it comes with. Okay, you've been watching Smartwatch Ticks. I appreciate your subscription. Definitely look in the show notes, support Tom Top if you like this watch. You can pick it up from them and uh, we'll see you again real soon with still more watches. They're coming in, folks. They're coming in.